20th Century Fox presents Academy Award winner Jodie Foster and international action star Chow Yun-Fat in Anna and the King, directed by Andy Tennant. And action. Join us for an epic journey that takes you from the jungles of Southeast Asia to one of the largest movie sets ever built. A journey into the story of two people who shared one extraordinary moment. It is the most amount of obstacles, the most amount of, of just elements uh, that I've ever done. I love the idea of, of doing a movie or a style of movie that they really don't do anymore. These big sweeping epics that have an enormous landscape and uh, an, uh, an amazing background and yet the story is just about these two people trying to survive within that environment. Why are you doing this? The real Anna Lee Owens, I think, is a, is a pretty controversial character. Uh, there are a lot of people that think that she's, especially the Thai people, uh, think that she's a, a big nothing, some English woman coming into this country who pretended to be more important than she was. A lot of other people feel that she uh, was really a great pioneer at the time, somebody who came to the Orient with a very, very open spirit, although perhaps not an open mind, uh, but a great adventurer. Sir is married? Oh, we do. Can you please explain to me why you call me sir? Women do not stand in the presence of His Excellency. For a woman at that time in the 1860s to travel thousands and thousands of miles in a ship all by herself, independently of a man with a young son, uh, to start a life in a country that couldn't be further than where she came from, I think is a pretty courageous and amazing thing. <laughs> Your Majesty. You do not look sufficient of age. How many years have you? Enough to know that age and wisdom do not necessarily go hand in hand. It's a romantic drama. It's the story of a woman who changed the heart of a king. This, my son, is your new teacher. It is a great honor, your highness. Who came to Siam and helped, you know, change this country. You claimed you wanted Siam to take its place among the modern world. You spoke of building something greater than yourself. Everything has its own time. It's like talking to a brick wall. You are learning. She has lots of battles with the King of Siam and tries to change things in ways that she shouldn't. You have the power to lead your... Now is not the time to change the way that things are done! Well, if not now, then when? You cannot shut the world out forever. This is quite a passionate moment for two characters in a, in a big, big epic. I believe there's been enough insult caused by this woman who believes herself to be the equal of a man. Not the equal of a man the equal of a king. When you really look into the history of Siam in the 19th century, it was a very violent, very dangerous time in Southeast Asia. These are dangerous times, Your Majesty. A foreigner's influence can be equally so. Luciana Rigi, our production designer, we all fell in love with early on. She was one of the first major pieces of casting that we brought onto the movie. Between her and Andy, they had an amazing vision for this palace. The Oscar-winning production designer created one of the largest sets ever built, a seven-acre replica of the King's Palace in Bangkok. We conceived it because we didn't film in Thailand, so there was no other option. And I knew that geographically, Malaysia would be very good, so all the locations would be there. But I did tell everybody that there's not one stick of architecture that we could use, so we had to build it. There's no other choice. There are about 500 to 800 men involved now, you're seeing, on this set. We've built complete structures, but we've only built the buildings we were interested in. But this was just such a huge scale, and um, it is even bigger than the real palace. It was being built while we were shooting in a different location, uh, so really we just got earfuls of how it was going. And what we kept going is, it's not done, it's not done, it can never get done. How will we ever finish this? It's not humanly possible. You know, we got all of that. It's been incredible to see the whole thing come together. Over there, we see the King's Study, which is based on an 18th century building. And you see the gilding there shimmering and the wonderful mirror, which brings the sky in. Then the marble, there's 4,000 square meters of marble in this set, this whole palace set. These are the ancient murals from 
the uh, period before they built Bangkok. They go on and on and on, as you can see, all the way down there. This is the Temple of the Emerald Buddha. We're just completing the exterior, as you see. We're going to landscape. There's a lot of gardening has to be done before we actually film here, but in principle, it's the great concourse where you will see thousands of extras and the elephants and the howders and the palaquins. This is a rare pleasure because the magnitude of what's being attempted here is beyond that which you would think possible. You're building an entire city. In order to get people to show up, you need to take them to a place they've never been before, and I guarantee they've never been this place before. Jenny Bevan has done an amazing job with the costuming of this film, down to the you know the tiniest detail on the 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 farthest extra you know in in the background. The Oscar-winning costume designer recreated 19th-century Thai fashions for a cast that included the king's 23 wives, 42 concubines, and 58 children, along with 19 elephants and over a thousand extras. When we started, we realized pretty quickly you couldn't just go and rent any of this; it had to be made. Here we've got a team of makers who are about 20 local seamstresses. We think we've bought about 15 kilometers of fabric. We've probably made about 5,000 costumes. Get it? This warehouse is where we store all the women's clothes. And what I'm most proud of in here is virtually everything you can see was part of a roll of fabric two months ago. It's actually working quite well for fabric. We only have a fairly small staff from England, plus a Malaysian crew. And the whole operation, the dressing, the turning out of the set, the fitting. We have the horsemen who all have to be dressed in one place. Of course, the elephant mahouts have to be dressed with the elephants and the children. When we first do dress them up, they have taken an enormous interest in, in what it is they're wearing. And they love the party dresses, and one of them just said it is the most wonderful frock she's ever had. Another challenge for Bevan, creating the look of stars Jodie Foster and Chow Yun-Fat. What I've tried to do is give him a wardrobe of a range of clothes, which Yun-Fat will always look terribly smart in. There's a nice contrast between uh, the flashiness and the beauty and the colors of Siam and the sort of blandness and softness in some ways of what Victorian English women were. I love animals. Uh, the elephants are cool. They're really sweet. You know, they trunk up your face. They smell. Orchestrating the film's elephant scenes required veteran animal trainer Rona Brown to lead a team of 56 Mahut trainers. The elephants have come from all over Malaysia, so the, the initial job was to get the elephants together so that they get to know each other, so that they like each other, find out who's going to be boss. When they put their trunks in each other's mouths, it's like a testing instrument. They're seeing if there's anything to eat that the other one's eating. It's also a social gesture. I love the elephants. I have to say, I think that's been probably one of the best parts of the movie is uh, seeing the big elephants and how sweet and gentle they are and how smart they are. And the mahouts, their owners who love them, who spend day and night just thinking about them and taking care of them and feeding them. And uh, the elephants in some ways are really the emblem of the film. Although elephants live here in the heat, they mostly live in the jungle under the cool shade. So I have cool fans. It's like a cool mist that bathes the elephant in cool water. And they just think it's the most wonderful thing. But it's very important that the elephants are happy because they have no choice to come here. We all have a choice to come. They have no choice. We've asked them to come, so they must be happy. Together, side by side. Another challenge for Brown teaching star Chow Yun-Fat how to ride. It sits just right on the, uh, their shoulder. So if you move, you can feel your chair is it's rocking, 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 you know, left and right, up and down. You know. They've been so cooperative. They've actually have been the best actors in the movie. You were fabulous. Yeah, he was fabulous. All right, good. So we got that going for us. You were so good. Good boy. You were so good. Good boy. The other day we were shooting a scene where it's the big procession, the cortege going up to the rice paddies, and um, 
we just have tons of elephants and horses and hundreds and hundreds of extras and we're pulling this big golden chariot. There's a certain element of surprise because you know you don't want to just constantly dwell on the fact that you have this many people. It's, it, it's incidental to the king and so in a sense it becomes sort of incidental to the movie but uh, for an audience seeing it fresh for the first time it becomes really extraordinary. This fella up here on the back with the king hasn't had his hair cut. Huh. It took probably three days just to figure out where to put everybody. We shut down a lane of the freeway to bring the extras in. We knew once we started, that was it. The road was blocked. We couldn't get anybody anywhere. That was truly like a military operation and had to be conducted as such. We knew that we had a certain amount of time to do it before the elephants got too hot. So we had uh, two sets of camera positions. We had five cameras rolling in a helicopter. We've done helicopter work. We've done. Uh a lot of work with a Libra head on a, on a crane to smooth out things when we're riding along with elephants and carriages and things like that. So, you know, there's a lot of special devices that we have to use under all the different circumstances that we're filming to sort of make things you know, work out. We stop again, we stop again. We've put all our principals in their most glitzy costumes and the king's elephant, we remade the Mahout's costumes so that they went with all the elephant trappings. We made them extra special. We upped the number of horsemen, so we've now got 75 horsemen who wear quite elaborate costumes. It's also nice because red is the predominant colour and it's shot against a very lush green landscape. This is life the way you know, you've never seen it before and, you know, will probably never exist again. When presented to His Majesty, you and son will remember to touch forehead to floor. Your Excellency, although we have become better acquainted with your custom, we have certainly not forgotten our own. Then how will you greet him? With the utmost respect. It really is a story about East meets West and West meets East. You commended him for his vision. And all the while you were waiting to take his country from him. These two very different people who have very different points of view about the world learn that the other side is actually okay. I never danced with an English woman before, ma'am. Or I was a king. I know what I want. Uh, when I go to the movies, I just want to be swept up in a, in a world and in a story that I've never seen before. Why did you come back? Because I could not imagine as I am without you. I can say that it's a tremendous romance, big, epic love story. Your Majesty promised me, promised me that I will see you again. The difference in our film is that it really is an epic about Asia. You see all of the beauty and the architecture and the pageantry and the landscapes that Siam was at the time. Mm -hmm.